For today, actually, I will be joined by a member of our team, Kim, who is our advocacy um, and professional standards um, expert and um, basically head of the entire department. Hi, Kim. Hi, Lita, Thank you? you so much for joining. Good, good. Thank you. Let's talk the serious things. Let's talk the things that everybody wants to talk about but is kind of afraid to talk about. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I know you have a very, very busy schedule. Let's con kind of contextualize a little bit what we're going to talk about. It, we keep hearing, you know, data breaches. We keep hearing GDPR. Can you give us a little bit of, of a measure of the situation at the moment, of, of cases, of um, the current legislation that people need to look out for? Sure. Um, so I think, first of all, GDPR, so the General Data Protection Regulation, entered into force in May 2018. So it's a fresh new law. The industry, all the industries in the entire European Union, have to really get along with it and have to get used to it. Um, but what we see already is an increase in complaints. So the CNIL, the Data Protection Authority in France, has already received 2,700 complaints about GDPR violations. So that's one thing which is huge. It's a 56% increase year on year for them. So we see that there's a lot of people which are interested in the law, uh, which are trying to test what the limits and the limitations are of this law and what can actually be put in force. So that's, that's a huge development. Uh, the other piece of development is that uh, it's not just GDPR. There's also in California, CAPCA which is like the Californian equivalent to GDPR, which is going to come into force in 2020. So that's a huge development as well. And what we're tracking as well is that it's not just Europe and it's not just the US. There's 100 countries around the world which are in the process of reviewing and revising their data protection laws. So lots and lots of changes in this space. That's very um, important to point out because, you know, everybody thinks, oh, maybe this is a European Union thing, it doesn't concern me, I have nothing to do with it, I work very in a very different area of the world. But in fact, this is uh, a very important point to look into and actually prepare properly for when, when, basically if you're working in a lot of other places. So um, in that context... When this legislation has started coming in, um, has there been an increase in data breaches, case, data breaches cases? You said there are, there are a lot more complaints, but in terms of the actual wrongdoing, um, do you have any information on that on a global scale? Um, so there's not any uh, numbers which are available globally. What we are seeing is that it's not so much maybe that there's an increase in the number of breaches, but because in a lot of countries you now have obligatory breach notification laws, we're seeing a lot more country, well, a lot more organizations reporting data breaches. So we see uh, Australia is actually a really good example of that, where they've just introduced uh, breach notification laws this year. And so in the first few months, we had five breach notifications, and now they're at a stage where they're getting 100 per month. So we're really seeing that actually probably what was already sitting under the surface is now coming up and uh, we're seeing what the tip of the iceberg actually is really hiding. So it's really also about awareness. Now people are also a lot more aware of their rights, they're a lot more aware of how to do things properly. But this, uh, this legislation um, generally has a very negative reputation. It's the big bad wolf that it ruins business, but that is not the case, and we're trying to explain that quite uh, fervently, I think, that actually GDPR, for example, in the context of market research, is a positive thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what we're saying to, to our members, particularly, is that actually if, they, if they've been following the ICCSMR code, if they've been following our guidelines and our, and our advice, actually what we've built in our DNA of our industry is all of the, what is required under GDPR or indeed any of the other global data protection legislations around the world. So what's been you know, the, the unique selling points of the industry, those are the strong points which are required by law now, but actually because we've been having decades of experience in it, we're in a really good place to say, well actually, not only are we the data experts, we're the ethical data experts which have been doing this for years, and that is what actually clients will be looking for in order to avoid the big fines. That's good to hear. Actually, we were ready all along. Um, we just needed to um, to voice that and make sure that we continue being ready as we should be. You mentioned the ICCSMR code. Where does SMR come in this situation and how can we help? I think in a number of ways. I think, first of all, we have access to a lot of knowledge. So as I mentioned, all the, the new laws which are coming around the corner, while we are monitoring those laws well in advance of them becoming into force, and we, of course, through our new services like SMR Plus, we are sharing that knowledge to the rest of the community so that they are equipped to deal with it. The other point that we're looking at is how can our codes and guidelines be better understood by governments so that they are seen as a mark of trust, both to the consumers 
and to the clients and to the governments. And by doing that, we help to mitigate the risk of fines, but we also help to demonstrate that this industry is an industry that you can trust to give your data to, which is really important to keep the business turning over. So to maintain the trust, both of the legislators and the clients, um, beyond being an SMR member, understanding the code and the guidelines, if, we, if a company wants to be GDPR compliant, you mentioned consultancy services. How can SMR help further? Yeah, so through SMR Plus, we offer a team of experts, which are experts in IT, they're experts in business processes and experts in the law, which work together to develop a very comprehensive and coherent support package for a company. We also have access to lawyers who understand both the law, but understand our codes and guidelines, so that the advice that they're giving is consistent with the best practices that we as an industry have agreed to on a global level. So it really makes the, the advice and the guidance really specific and bespoke for the industry, but is also consistent with everything that, they've, that the industry has been working to for the last decades. So a service you should not miss if you if you want to be GDPR compliant. And you're very busy here, of course. Um, you just came from a pub quiz. How did that go? Anything interesting or funny you want to share? Um, yeah, I think there's still quite a lot of difference in appreciation about what's happening around the world. Um, I think we also had some people who really know and understand what data protection and privacy is. So it's also quite reassuring to see that around the world people know what the laws are, or at least have them in their radar. I think sometimes it's in the, the, the devil is in the detail. Yeah. And that's what uh, the pub quiz helps to showcase, is where, where the details might be incorrect. And that's again something which we offer through SMR Plus. So we actually offer training, which is fun, interactive. It's difficult to make you know data protection, privacy fun, but we actually do. And um, the people um, you know had a good time and won, won some great prizes. Give us a little bit of the um, of the other side. What are some of the um, more surprising things that you have seen in your in your experience that people are not aware of and they really should be? Any tips or anything that people need to look up, um, basically out for? I think there's things like um, the, this idea that consent is everything. So we still think that uh, consent has to be the only way to get people's data, which is not quite correct. I think if we see uh, the new legislations, we see an understanding that a lot of data is coming in through passive ways or is being reused from other places. And we see that actually the legislators have understood that point and that they're actually developing laws or trying to develop laws which enable us to continue doing the things that we do in today because they recognize the value of that. I think also the, the other point I think is that people still remain very scared of the fines, but actually uh, what people perhaps don't understand is that um, if you look at the data protection authorities, what they're saying is our first go-to point isn't fines. Our first go-to point is to work with you, to educate you in terms of what the requirements are and to then develop the best practices. And only after that, if you are not paying attention to us, then yeah, we have a very big stick to hit you with. <laughs> so. All of these things, the legislation, GDPR, all of the data privacy regulations are actually something that helps us continue what we do best and in fact are not as scary as they look like and are probably easier to implement than we think and SMR can certainly help. Thank you very much, Kim. Thank you for taking Thank the time you. and good luck for the rest of the day. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.